I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? It is a great day, and I'm so very excited to be here. I am here with Mr. Lewis E. Johnson. He is an author, and he has a book called What's in a Snowflake, right? I think I got that right. And he kind of compares his life to a snowflake. I compare my life to a broccoli. Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back because I don't know. Snowflake just sounds too pretty for me. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube or and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the show. So, um, okay, so we have Mr. Johnson here and we're going to go ahead and go back because I think there's always a story to be had before the book really comes into play. So welcome to the show, sir. How are you? I am fine. And you look fine as well. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. Well, I, I born and raised here in Utah. It's a little town called Huntsville. It's up in the mountains. Um, traditionally, it's kind of a real rural, backward kind of a town. Uh, things have changed now. Uh, you know how that works. When somebody finds a beautiful place, it starts changing. But it was pretty simple life as I grew up here. Mm. Um, I taught school for 30 years, tried to teach kids how to do math. Served in the United States Navy as a nuclear reactor operator on fast attack submarines. <laughs> Was oh a diver in the Navy. Um, I have four wonderful children. My wife and I are in our 42nd year of marriage. So uh, lots of good things. Anyway, enough about me. <clears throat> what else? <laughs> well, this is about you. you have enough about you and the show is over. There you go. Go good, good. So, well, congratulations on 42 years of marriage. It is beautiful. It takes a lot to do that. And also, which, I mean, you, you know, being in the service, thank you so much for your service. And uh, wow. that. So uh, when did the, the analogy come in for the snowflake? Because I don't know if I see it yet. Okay. So the, the book, <clears throat> it's kind of hard to get it all in one little story, but in, in a simple um I was raised really, most people would call poor, so we didn't have uh, many things. Um, uh, and as a child, I really didn't know that. Um, so my book isn't about an abusive uh, uh, childhood or anything. In fact, I think I was probably one of the most blessed people in the world the way we were raised. But <clears throat> life was very simple. And as most people, I think, you don't know much about your parents as a little kid. You really don't know their backgrounds and what's going on and why you're in that situation. <clears throat> so in the book, um, my first motivation was a thank you to my parents for the way they raised me. <clears throat> um, but as things progress, you learn things about your parents and what went on. And that's kind of the book. It's kind of reflective. It's set in a deal. Um, um, as I recall these memories and kind of connect the dots of, oh, aha, those aha moments. Uh, in a just a, a little span, <clears throat> um, my mom was born in 1924. And at six years old, so 1930, her father was tragically killed in an, um, an um, accident and she had three little siblings and her mother eventually went insane. And, and it was kind of a, <clears throat> I mean, it's a little emotional to me when I talk about it, but <clears throat> could have been a very, very devastating thing. So that's one tiny thing. I did not know that when I was a kid. I didn't know about that. My father, on the other hand, was kind of the same thing in a different situation. When he was a very young child, his parents were forced to divorce and some things. So the same thing happened. His family was torn apart. So anyways, as I learned all those things, we ended up in a situation where it was kind of a struggle. And we were, I remember always being cold. Um, uh, sometimes hungry. Uh, we didn't have much th many things, but I have to emphasize I never felt like we were unloved. You know, it wasn't, again, I, I have to emphasize it wasn't abusive at all. It was just a struggle of people trying to survive and do the best with what they had. So 
uh, anyway, I'm rambling a little bit, but uh, that's kind of the background to the story. And so the story, I, I reflect on how I learned different things about my parents and then understood about our situation and kind of passed that on. <clears throat> wow. I don't know. Your next question is, so what's the snowflake got to do with it, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, so the snowflake, where, where, I mean, how did you do that? Where did, it, where did that come in? <clears throat> so as, as little children, my mother would always have these do something activity days. We were never, we always had, we were doing something. And um, in the book, I talk about that. Um, we did, we made uh, dolls out of hollyhock flowers and put uh, uh, the legs on with toothpicks and stuff like that. We made uh, corn cob darts with uh, chicken feathers and made targets and threw them. I remember as a kid, we had uh, cardboard boxes and we made suits of armor and used flower sacks and anyway, those kind of things. So just constantly these activities. Well, one of those activities that she taught us when I was little was how to cut a snowflake. And she would fold it in the hexagon so that when you cut it out, you would get the picture. And so I carried that with me. I, we kept doing snowflakes. Maybe it's a good time to show you a couple. Is that Yeah, definitely. Okay. So here's, I don't know if you can see it. Can can you picture that? Is it, see that? Oh my gosh. You see, yeah, that is beautiful. Oh, so this one I did for the publisher, and I don't know if you can see, it's got books, and yeah. here's a hand with a, a quill. I don't know if you can see the pictures in it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So instead of just doing it, it, we started out as lacy snowflakes. Um, this one's a little larger. I don't know if we can get in front of you so we can see. I don't know, can you see this? Oh my gosh, that is a beautiful, is that a violin? Yes, so this is like a music staff yes, going around. Yes, I see it. You've come, I mean, look at the people playing. There you go, see? Oh so my gosh. So, and part of the thing, so anyway, so you can kind of get a flavor of as we graduate and learn to make snowflakes. Um, so when I went to write the book, I thought of that, that when you take a blank piece of paper and you start cutting it out, it's really, there's really not anything there to it, kind of like our lives. And each little cut and event and things that happen in your life, cut and shape and mold your picture until it actually unfolds. And in most cases, to this beautiful picture, a beautiful life that is unique to you and, uh, and each person. So that's the analogy of the snowflake. And I've had many people reading my book that um, they reflect on their own life. What, what it is, kind of inspiration. So some of the stories I tell in there about uh, events and things in our, in our home, it brings memories for other people, what happened in their lives and their traditions. And so it's kind of those cool things kind of seen how you, does that kind of make sense? <laughs> it does. It does. I love your snowflakes. I, Thank you. you know, I was, I was just kind of thinking, you know, cause you kind of, you, you're right. You reflect on yourself, you know, you look at these snowflakes and you're going, Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. I don't think I could ever do that. I think my life is a broccoli. I just literally <laughs> just, <laughs> Because I can't do any of that, okay? I, I'm not, I'm not that good. I'm, no, I can do triangles, squares, circles, but yeah, no, nothing like what you just did and what you've shown me. I literally think that you know you had a, a great parent who did her best, you know. And 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 what kind of a a reflection did did you have to make to want to go back into their lives? Because I don't, I don't want to do that with my parents. I don't, I don't want to know. No. It's one, and the book goes through that. So there were little things, for example, and part of it, I talk about how um, we had papers in our house where my older brother and my sisters had di a different last name than I did. And you're like, but but I, when I grew up, their last name was Johnson, the same as us. And I didn't, it was one of those things like, well, whatever. And then as you get older, I found out. So my mother had uh, three children previous to marrying my father <clears throat> and and the circumstances behind that is incredible um her husband was in the air force and 
through some, and I don't go into a lot of details, but he got injured in the military and actually turned to drugs and ended up in the incarceration in the military. And my mother was destitute in Nevada. And at one point, <clears throat> we actually heard the stories at her funeral. At one point, she was actually approached by a neighbor and asked to sell her youngest daughter, my little, my sister, just older than me. And there was a threat of, if you don't, we're going to turn you into the services as an unfit mother because she was struggling. Her husband wasn't sending her any money and they were trying to survive. So she took, he, she took those three children and just headed out in the desert of Nevada thinking, I don't know what to do. I was going to just, I, in her mind, I think she was going to die. Uh, and, it's, and that's one of the little things in the story where you're like, wow. Wow. How did that... <laughs> wow. that... Yeah, that that makes sense. That that makes sense why you would want to be, you know, yes. poking around and stuff and trying to find out them. Your mom was a strong woman. She actually was. Uh, um, like I said, at six years old, her father was killed and she ended, ended up, her mother ended up in an insane asylum and she actually found out, found a, a friend and was able to live with some, their, her name was Swan, and they took her in and gave her the ability to go to high school and to do her life. They weren't family. They just took her in. <clears throat> so we've had some great breaks in our life and it, it, crazy anyway. And my father's story, we won't go into whatever you want to ask, but his, his <laughs> same kind of deal. My father actually ended up... Um, basically as a young boy a slave laborer in a barn and was not living with his parents and it's crazy and his mother anyway so these two people is that in the book yes okay then and we so don't need to know yeah we, yeah we we'll leave that alone we'll yeah, leave that alone uh, and that is that is amazing i mean that you can't, can't i mean can you make this up i mean literally <laughs> speaking this is like you can't make this up he laugh he said if if you actually put this in a, a movie or something, people would think it was fiction. There was too many things. So anyway, these two people somehow ended up together to be to have a family. And as I say in the book, my dad had no mentors to help him be a father. He had no idea. Mom, of course, was when she they married, she had three children, so she knew something about being a mother, but basically they they didn't have any script. And then the crazy part is, in my early life, they actually fell on the hard times as well. They went in a situation where uh, they were left destitute in Idaho and were trying to find a place. <laughs> anyway, all these kind of things happen. But the good part is, through all of that, I, the thing that we, they were, we were always taught is we never made excuse for our life. And we always tried to do the best with what we had. <clears throat> that is truly amazing. That is truly, you know what? You, you had some really strong parents. Through everything that they went through, they kept it together for you guys. Yes. And you think of the period of time. We're talking through the Depression and World War II and all those kind of things. And so the country, and it isn't like it was unique. People, there's people who struggled all over the place. And that's why I like the book. When I did it, I, I didn't try to emphasize that we were poor picked on people. It was just, you know, with the situation you have, you can actually do well, mm -hmm. regardless of what you're handed. Yeah. Uh, and wow. I used to get frustrated with kids in school when I was teaching. I'm like, no, could you, you guys have way more than you need. Anyway. Yeah, they do. Yes, yeah, they yeah. do. I agree. I totally good agree. Good, good, oh, yes. good. oh, yes. Wow. Wow. You know, your story and your parents' story is incredible. And I think that, you know, a lot of people nowadays have a lot of things that they, you know, that there are still some stories out there. I'm not going to lie. There's still some stories out there. But they're few, far, and in between. They're not like they were before and, and in the past. You know, things have changed for the better in a lot of different cities and circumstances. Oh, true, true. In, in yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not going to say that people don't suffer. I'm not going to say that there aren't those unique stories out there that we haven't 
you know, been a preview to, but, but yours is, yeah, exceptionally, you know, it's like, well, your, your, your father was a slave boy. Yeah. Well, okay. kind of. I mean, what happened is like his parents, there's a terrible divorce, uh, split up. I, I don't know how to describe it. It was actually not a divorce. I, I'll tell you a little bit from the book. So it was hard times, the depression, they had a young family. Uh, and so his father went on the road for work to try and get work and do things. He even did some ride, riding in the rodeo and mining and all sorts of stuff, trying to get money. But while he was gone, his mother-in-law, uh, the best way I can say it uh, is didn't think his efforts were good enough for her daughter and managed somehow with the authorities to get them divorced to have their family separated while he was gone. And the crazy thing is when he came back, and again, these are stories I found out way later, um, uh, they would actually, they snuck and got met, got together and his wife became pregnant and his mother-in-law forced her to get an abortion and kept him, it was like, so those are the kind of things And my dad was the oldest, he was the little boy. And so he ended up, back with his grandma and then they he slept in the barn for a while oh, but basically evil no, woman yes yeah well she is the one yes so you it's like how how do you oh, do she, that she reminds me of cruella <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's nice i call her a demon demonic woman uh, <laughs> yes but, that, uh, that's yeah we're gonna have to get the book thank you uh, yeah, yeah definitely you're gonna have to get the book what is in a snowflake? There you go. And yeah. that was the whole point. And that was what you said, mom, when we had cut them and you're like, it's, well, I'll show you. Here's mm -hmm. one that I cut. Can you see this? Oh my gosh. So it's just a piece of paper. Right. And we get it cut in, into the design that you wanted. Uh, of course, I've gone a little bit more than when we were kids. No. So, but then my, mo <laughs> my mom, when we we're getting ready, she would say, okay, what's in a snowflake? And then we would start to unfold it. So I don't know if you can see this. It's probably hard to see on the radio or the, the video, the design, but can you see it kind of unfolding? Yeah, I do. My fingers are on the Eskimo. Can you see them? I can't really make it out. Okay, let me see if I, anyway, so that's what you do. And I think that's what happens. Sometimes the picture doesn't really come to uh, full benefit until it starts to unfold, you know, after it's going, and then you're like, oh, and that's what we, we had fun with the snowflakes is, let me see if I can get this. And it's kind of hard to see. Can you see? Okay. Right, right below, between my fingers is this, the Eskimo. Oh, I see the face of the Eskimo now. Yes. Yeah. And below, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, a set of killer whales, orcas. Yes. Yep. In the narwhals up here. Mm hmm And you can, I don't know if you can see a wolf's face underneath his, on both sides of the Eskimo. Yes, I do. And then there's a polar bear. Wow. A, a caribou. I think side. you, yeah, you, you've gone a little further than just a typical <laughs> snowflake yeah, thing. That makes sense. Do. So she would say, what's in a snowflake? And then we'd unfold them. And usually it's, it was more beautiful than it looked when it was folded up. And that's more of the analogy that as lives unfold and you look back on them, then the picture begins to appear. So. Wow. Well, you're frozen. <laughs> I am. There you go. You're okay. back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We anyway. have to send us some some snowflakes, or or at least some pictures of your snowflakes, because now you've gone beyond the traditional snowflake thing yeah. that you you've you've just. Do you <laughs> sell your snowflakes? I mean, what is in a snowflake? I mean, truly. I actually do sell them some, but it's one of those things where I'll back up there if you're. It's curious. So the snowflake thing actually started to this this next level one christmas uh, my oldest son and i were cutting snowflakes and he got real ambitious and cut real uh, a beautiful design 
And I remember thinking, whoa, I can, I'm can. i going to one-up you. So that it became this one-upman thing. So my oldest son probably does fancier ones than I do. He's a better, a much better artist. Uh, so it just kind of kept growing. Uh, and we, and anyway, then I'll back up. So in the book, I did, I tell this, I was actually teaching in my math class and we were talking about symmetry and I just grabbed a piece of paper and fold it and started cutting a snowflake for the class. Cause we were talking about it. And then as I unfolded it, this little gal in my class stood up and said, Hey, Mr. Johnson, let's have a snowflake making contest. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, and that's in the book. I'm, I remember it, I'm thinking, you have no idea who you just challenged <laughs> <laughs> to a snowflake contest. And so the setting in the book is when I said, okay. And so as I go through, so I also intertwine stories from my class, kids over the years and things that happened. Um, I'll share, I'll share two of them. If that's, I mean, again, shut me up if I'm done, <laughs> but. Okay. We got, we got a couple more minutes. Go ahead. Okay. So I, I, um, when I was teaching in a high school, uh, there was a little gal there. She was a junior in high school and both of her parents were killed in an airplane accident. And I remember, <clears throat> um, I mean, it's that's tra drama, traumatic, whatever, and circumstances. Well, this gal, this little gal, took over the payments of her house, got a job, and took on her sibling, and was taking on that responsibility and moving on with it. And I'm like, wow, you know. So these kids, the kids that I experienced as they go through these stories, things that happened to them. I had little, um, the other one, this little gal, Sierra wonderful good one of those kids that you just you you can't help but love she was just um she was into all the kind of social things she was a cheerleader in the school she was in student body she was happy but the crazy thing is from my view she never got um arrogant or exclusive or anything she was just a great kid and in my class on a friday night we were actually laughing this was in junior high this one and her birthday was going to be Monday. So we're teasing about, et cetera. So fast forward over the weekend, some tragic things happened. She dehydrated and she passed away on her early Monday morning on her birthday. Never came back to class. And those kind of things where you're like, <clears throat> I remember looking at the my seating chart and I just couldn't erase her name. <clears throat> And you just think of those things that happen to people and events and, and how they cope. And some people do pretty well and some people don't. And so that was part of my inspiration in the book as I wove those stories in too, as well as my own to say, you know what? I, I, I can't give tell you how, but this what life is worth living. And we need to make the best of what the circumstances give us instead of letting them um, stop us. I, I, yeah. My analogy is, is it a stumbling block or a building block? Which one is, are you going to make it? So does that make sense? It does. It does. <laughs> wow. Wow. What's in a snowflake? Where can we get this book? So it was published by Newman's Publishing. And right now it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So you could you can buy it there, and I would love it if you did. <laughs> uh, That's good amazing. Thing. Yeah, definitely. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Johnson, for being on the show. You have a very unique life, to say the least. I love it. I've I been do blessed. too. <laughs> I do too. I do too. I want to thank you so much for being here and for sharing your stories, and most of all for writing "What's in the Snowflake." I think now I understand. Thank you. Now I overstand. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much. We're going to put the link for that book in the description box, wherever you may watch uh, above, below, whatever. And uh, go ahead and check that out for yourself. You know, these stories are amazing, but they're true, which you can't make this up. Okay. So you might as well just go ahead, get your hot cocoa because it is a snowflake, right? Yes. And sit down and get this book, read it. What's in a snowflake?
I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. Bye.